Yeah, many people as have heard now about Nikkei. You know, uh, uh, if we analyze the word Nikkei uh, and we go to the dictionary, we would find that Nikkei means uh, Japanese uh, descendants or Japanese immigrants outside of Japan. So, uh, being said that, anywhere in the world we find Nikkei people like, like me, for example. Um, but there's something very interesting in Peru that happened. Uh, uh, more than 115 years ago, it's actually 1899 when when the big immigration came from 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 Japan, uh, and they came to work in uh, in sugarcane and cotton farms in Peru, uh, and this was uh, for a reason. That was the time of the industrial revolution. So many farmers in Japan didn't have jobs. Okay, so so Peru has always been a a, a, a country that has been focused on farming for thousands of years. You know, uh, agriculture and farming in Peru uh, has been always one of the most important uh, industries and the mo one of the important, uh, most important cultural uh, uh, identities of the country. You know, because the way the agriculture is made in Peru, it's the way it, it was made thousands of years ago. Organic. Um, Respecting the environment, you know, that's what we do right now. We're turning, we're going, we we are going backwards, anyways, you know, of what the Incas did or or the people or the people before the Incas. But well, so um, they came to work uh, in cotton farms and and sugar cane farms, and uh, they said there was a contract between governments of Peru and Japan. Uh, the Japanese were supposed to come for two years and then go back to Japan. Um, after the two years no one went back and uh, there were two reasons for that first of all because they did too well, very well or they did too bad so uh, the, the ones who did very well uh, worked together with the owners of the of, of, of the farms and uh, and the ones who, who didn't do very well didn't have the money to go back anyway so uh, they started uh, looking uh, what to do after the contract ended so so many of them opened uh, barber shops for example it's incredible barber shops the first barbershop association of, 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 of Peru was, was made of Japanese, of Nikkei's. Uh, they opened shops, and of course, many of them opened restaurants. They opened restaurants in their houses. They, they put some tables, you know, and uh, they uh, opened the door, and they cooked Peruvian cuisine. So these were the, the sons, you know, of the offsprings of, of, the, of the immigrants who were already Peruvian, had these, uh, they were speaking Spanish, they knew the country, um, and that uh, they, 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 they were cooking Peruvian cuisine. And why is that? Many people think that, that the Japanese that came to Peru started cooking Japanese cuisine in Peru. At that time, we're talking 1960s, 1950s probably. At that time, there was not a market for Japanese cuisine in Peru. There were no ingredients to 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 cook Japanese cuisine, so uh, the Chinese who were before the Japanese in Peru had already helped, you know, in bringing the soy and and some Oriental vegetables, who helped the Japanese to develop a cuisine which was Peruvian, but it also had a Japanese influence. Let's say, for example, uh, they did uh, uh, ceviches, but uh, they added soy sauce. Uh, to the ceviche, or uh, they started doing uh, a lot of uh, saute with wok. You know, the use of the wok in Peru, it's, uh, it's amazing how, how, how in Creole cuisine in Peru, every restaurant has a wok. You know, because one of the flagship uh, Peruvian dishes is lomo saltado, which is basically an oriental um, saute with a ten beef tenderloin, tomatoes, chilies, etc. Uh, uh, and it's one of, of, of our main or most important uh, dishes in Peru. So, being said that, I, I mean, these, these chefs were, were cooking Peruvian cuisine, but with Japanese influence. So, when Peruvians went to these restaurants, uh, they, 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 they didn't uh, say, I'm going to eat Nikkei cuisine, or they didn't say, I'm going to have Japanese cuisine. They just went to, to, to eat Peruvian cuisine, but with a different style or, or, or a twist, to say it like that, you know. So uh, that's the way it started, like a homemade cuisine, and, uh, and uh, from there it developed. I was talking about cevicherias. 
the first cevicheria, ceviche is probably our most important right now uh, uh, dish in Peru. And uh, the concept of the cevicheria was created by Anike. So before that, there were not cevicherias. There were places that sell ceviche, which were mainly on, 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 on the, 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 places where, the, the places where fishermen were, you know. Uh, uh, but, uh, but there were no restaurants focused on that, uh, on that style of cuisine, to say, to say that. And uh, the Nikes were the first to do that. So, so that's one important thing. Um, I divide the, the, the Nike cuisine in Peru in three stages. Okay, so the first stage is a stage, uh, the one I just told you that these immigrants come to Peru and they open the restaurants doing Peruvian cuisine, but with Japanese twists, to say it like that. That's when the tiradito starts, that's when the ceviche uh, made, uh, not marinated for, 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 for one day or for 12 hours, but made like a la minute, you know, mixing the lemon with the fish, because the Japanese, when they came to Peru, uh, they said, hey, if you're going to make ceviche, why should we marinate the fish so, so long? I mean, the best way to have uh, fresh fish is to have it right away. And uh, the, the lime helps, but it, it shouldn't be marinating so long. So, so, so they influence the ceviche the way we eat it right now. Uh, the tiradito, which is the, 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 the encounter of the sashimi and the ceviche, was also a creation of the Nikkei. Um, sea snails uh, braised in, sho in, in shoyu or soy sauce. Um, uh, the fish, Peruvians didn't eat uh, fish and seafood. Peruvians didn't eat octopus before the Japanese or the Italians. Uh, these two cultures uh, taught Peruvians how to have shellfish, you know, because at that time they said the, the, the only fishes that were eaten were uh, sea bass and uh, flounder. Those were the only two species. Having per Peru being a country that has thousands of, 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 of different kinds of fish and seafood, okay? So, on one hand, there is this uh, uh, startup of the Nikkei cuisine, and then the second stage of Nikkei cuisine comes. These restaurants, which are, most of them are still open, as uh, cevicherias or Nikkei restaurants, uh, that's uh, until, until now. And then in the 1970s, um, because of, of the Japanese companies that come to Peru, Toyota, Mitsubishi, Mitsui, etc. Uh, they bring their their, their 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 managers, you know, and, and Japanese staff to 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 their offices in Lima, and uh, a demand was created for Japanese cuisine. So that's when 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 Nobu actually comes to Peru, you know, this um, he he's a really good friend and he's a very very famous chef, one of also the pioneers of showing Nikkei cuisine to the world, and. Uh, and they find a country which uh, has a huge biodiversity. Uh, it was hard to get importation from Japan at that time, so they had to do sushi and Japanese cuisine, respecting the tradition at first, but using local ingredients. They had to, 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 to be creative in, you know, in finding ingredients that, that, that were similar to one, the ones I used in Japan. And all of a sudden, the first, uh, the, the first stage, all the Japanese uh, customers were the ones who, who went to these restaurants. But uh, little by little, they started uh, doing uh, Japanese Peruvian cuisine, which is the opposite cuisine that we're doing the Nikkei, which was Peruvian, Peruvian cuisine with Japanese influence. And then the chefs from Jap that came from Japan were doing Japanese cuisine with Peruvian influence. That's when the makis or the rolls, the sushi rolls with ceviche sauce, with anticucho, with, with lomo saltado flavor, start to start to become really famous. Uh, that's, that's when really, uh, I would say probably uh, 15 years ago approximately, um, many, many restaurants, Japanese restaurants to, to, to say it so, uh, start to open around the city. And uh, that's when I, I, I always say there is a breaking point there because they were all called, them, they, all, they, they all called themselves Japanese restaurants, but they were not serving Japanese food. Uh, and I always said that because many people ask me, you know, when did the Japanese cuisine boom start in Peru? There was never a Japanese cuisine boom in Peru because when the Japanese cuisine was very orthodox, it was very like purist, it was very Japanese. It's, 
uh, Peruvians didn't like it because uh, to, to, that's the truth. We are we are used to to stronger flavors. We are used to to ají, to to sofrito, aderezo. Uh, Peruvian cuisine. I always say Peruvian cuisine is like like I know hard rock, okay. And Japanese cuisine is like classical music, okay. And they are very different in some ways. Uh, uh, but I always say that that opposite poles in magnets uh, in magnets attract. So so being so different. In flavors, uh, 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 when when you get them together, they they make a very nice balance. You know, the heat is lower in the spices uh, uh, from the side of the of the of the Japanese flavors, but the Japanese cuisine gets this, you know, bigger or, or stronger flavor. So so it makes a nice balance. So what it, it happens is that these restaurants that were called Japanese, everybody said, I'm gonna go to a Japanese restaurant. I'm gonna have an acevichado. I'm gonna have a a uh, uh, saltado with a uh, with a camarillo or yellow chili, and and uh, uh, many, many people said you know, my, my father is from Japan, you know, said this is not a Japanese restaurant. So what what is this? This is Nikkei also. So there are two styles of Nikkei cuisine to say it so. The Japanese, the, the one that starts from Japan and is influenced by Peruvian ingredients, and the one which is Peruvian, which is influenced by Japan. So, so we have both sides. And why this, there's a reason why this works. It's not, it, it, it was a natural, I don't like to use the word fusion so much, you know, because for me sometimes fusion becomes confusion in a way. But, um, but it, at one moment, uh, uh, there's a reason why this work and works, and it's because the ají or the chili Together with the soy sauce, it's uh, there are two ingredients that are for me are, are made for each other, and I'm not saying some, anything new because in Asia, in many countries, the use of the, the of the of the of the ajíes or chilies together with the soy sauce as the base of their cuisines, it's normal. Okay, so in Peru, and where do the chilies come from or the ajíes? They come either from Mexico and from Peru. These are the two countries uh, that actually uh, uh, send to the world the, 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 the chilies, as Peru, like the potatoes, you know, that travel all over the world. So, so they're, they're native from our countries. So, so, so these ajíes that we find all over the world either come from Mexico or from Peru. That, 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 that's a fact. So um, since in Asia, they use that, so the, the mix of soy sauce and chili works very well. That's for, that for me and for all Nikkei uh, chefs, that's the DNA of our cuisine. So if you have a DNA which goes very well together, you know, the mix of this, did, when you take, you close your eyes and you taste the, the, the chilies with the, with, the, with the soy sauce, you say, okay, this is Nikkei in Peru. So you start from there. I would say 90% of my dishes or my preparations have these two ingredients. From there, we work many, many things. Being, I mean, in Peru, we have more than 300 kinds of varieties of, of, of ajíes or chili. So, so it's not one, only one type, you know. So with, with that, we have the second stage. The first stage, you know, I already explained, the second stage, which is the Japanese uh, uh, sushi restaurants with Peruvian, with Peruvian influence. And now, actually, in, at this time, there's a third stage. Where, where these two, where, where the first and the second stage get together and creativity comes up, you know. Um, not only uh, ceviches, not only sushi, but everything gets together in one place and uh, you have a Nikkei restaurant with an own identity. My culinary identity, uh, well, first of all, it's Nikkei uh, and creative. Well, developing this identity was a, uh, was natural in a way because um, I was raised uh, eating Nikkei food uh, in, my, in my house. And not only me, you talk to, to, to any Nikkei in Peru and uh, they will tell you that uh, they would, uh, their, their mom or, 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 or their uh, grandma, they, they would cook on Sundays and uh, they would do uh, Peruvian cuisine, for example, sashimi or in this case, Japanese cuisine, sashimi. But instead of serving it with soy sauce only, uh, you have on the table lime, limes and chilies, 
to 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 squeeze the lime in the in, in the in the in the soy sauce and put some spiciness with the chili and dip the the sashimi in this spicy soy sauce, which is and lime juice, which is basically how a ceviche is in a way. Okay, so uh, when we have rice, for example, <laughs> we have Peruvian stews. And Peru, we, in Peru, we cook the rice with garlic, with some oil. Uh, it's not like the, the, the Japanese rice, but we will have Peruvian stews with Japanese rice served on a bowl, like a donburi. So that was the way we, we ate, the way I ate in my house. So, so when I uh, decided to become a chef, um, that was when I'm, I was like 15 years old. Um, I had many, of course, at that time, French cuisine, Italian cuisine, you know, were the cuisines that were your reference and, until now in a way, but I, I think uh, it's normal for me and for, for every chef of that generation to, uh, to uh, you look forward to, to, to that cuisine and you wanted to do something like that anyways. And, uh, and of course, Japanese cuisine. So, so um, I was very confused in a way on what to do. Even though I had this Nikkei heritage, uh, uh, and, and I was eating for uh, uh, my whole life Nikkei cuisine, I, I, I didn't realize that that was the cuisine I was going to do in my restaurant anyways. That came, came into my mind uh, uh, after being in Japan. After graduating from school, actually, I, I, I came here, uh, I, I, I did my college in the U.S. I went to Providence, Rhode Island, I went to Johnson & Wales, cooking school. Um, and after that, uh, I did a couple of, uh, of internships in Peru. Uh, and then I went to Japan. I, I stayed there for two years uh, and learned uh, basically traditional Japanese cuisine spe uh, and uh, especially sushi. Okay? Uh, once I was in Japan, I, I came back to Peru. And that's where I worked for, uh, I worked for, uh, for Sheraton, for Starwood for uh, six years. Uh, and this hotel is one of the most, it has almost 40 years of existence. And it's a hotel which, which is one of the, uh, the, the icons of, uh, of traditional Peruvian cuisine for the amount of years they have. So they, I learned a lot of Peruvian cuisine there. So having been, have, after being in Japan and, and, and learning Peruvian cuisine, traveling around Peru, I realized that, uh, that, that there's no better way to to, to, to show, I think cooking it's a way of showing what you are. So, uh, and, I, and, and I, I believe that, I, I think every chef uh, thinks, thinks like me. And uh, I'm Nikkei. So I said, I'm gonna do what comes from my heart, what, what, what I lived, so, so I, I, I'm gonna do Nikkei cuisine. And nobody at that time was calling their cuisine Nikkei. As I, as I told you before, they either called it Japanese cuisine, but they were not doing Japanese, or they called it uh, Peruvian cuisine, but they were not doing actually real Peruvian cuisine, they were doing Japanese Peruvian, okay? So uh, people were already talking about Nikkei cuisine, but uh, nobody uh, had a restaurant or named the restaurant as a concept, like saying pizzeria or, 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 or I don't know, you know, at the trattoria or, or a steakhouse, nobody was putting, you know, the, the name of the restaurant and the concept. So when I opened my door, uh, I said, I'm gonna put Nikkei Cuisine. And that was a problem because at that time, people were listening to Nikkei Cuisine. They, they, they heard about it, but then they didn't really know what it was. So it was, it was, at, the, at first it was hard to let them, to, to, under, to, to, to make them understand what we, Nikkei Cuisine is. When somebody asks me how, how my creativity or what, what stimulates this creative process, uh, I always say it's Peru. Peru, it's uh, totally inspiring. Um, I mean, I, I have this camera here, so I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna tell you guys, uh, you have to come, come over to Peru. Uh, I cannot explain it in words, you know. It's a, uh, it's a magical country. Uh, Traveling one hour by plane from Lima, 
you find uh, you, you you go from sea level to to four thousand five hundred meters of altitude. It's no. It can be sunny thirty degrees in Lima. It can be snowing one hour away. Not not two hours. Not three hours. One hour flight. You're it's snowing. You go one hour north and and, and uh, you have a uh, forty degrees of temperature. Um, you you travel one hour to the Amazon and you are in a totally different world. So. Peru is not a huge country, it's not a big, big country, but, but it's a country that has so many uh, microclimates, so many, it's, it's, a, no, it's not a biodiverse, it's a mega diverse country. Uh, we have more than 75% of the microclimates of the world and uh, different altitudes. That's the cuisine that Virgilio is doing. He, he's working the, the ecosystems according to the altitudes of the country. So, so the landscapes that you, you, you see are, are, are just breathtaking. Uh, uh, every time you, you, you grab your car and you go somewhere, you grab a plane and, and, and you go to, the, to, 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 to Cusco, to Ayacucho, to Tarapoto, to Puno, to Piura, Chiclayo, any of the cities of, of Peru, you see different traditions, you see different products, uh, going to the Amazon, it's a whole new experience. So, so whenever you, you, you do one of these trips, you, you, you come, you know, I don't know, inspired. You, you, come, uh, you come with, with so many ideas, so many, so many things you want to do that, uh, that it's part of. Uh, so, so, so that's what I, why, why, why I say that my inspiration is, is Peru. It, it, it's a landscape, it's a tradition, they are the products, everything. So, so it comes strictly from, from, from Peru. I use Japanese techniques, of course. I use Japanese, Jap Japanese ingredients, but my inspiration ha comes 100% from, from Peru. Relating to my customers, it's uh, something that, uh, and I talked about this one week ago, uh, and, and, and uh, I always talk about this with my team, actually. Uh, there's nothing better in life to make people happy. Uh, I think uh, in this industry, uh, we're in a service industry. You know, you have, you have to have this vocation of service. And uh, before, before the, 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 the business itself, uh, I think cooking is about passion first. And uh, the name Maido, it's very, related or closely related to, to your question because Maido in Japan means thank you for coming again or thank you for, 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 for being here again. So if you go to Japan, and it's a typical word from Osaka, where my family is from, if you go to a restaurant, for example, and you go once or twice, they would say irashaimase, which means welcome. If you go once a week, and they know you already, they wouldn't say irashaimasu, they would say maido, because you are already a regular customer. And if you go often, it's because you like the place, it's because they pamper, it's because, it's, it's because they, know, they, they, know, they know what you like, they know how you like it. Uh, sometimes you, didn't, you, you don't even have to ask, you know, they, already, they would bring you uh, your, your wine or, or, or they, they would know if, if you have seal or sparkling water, whatever. So that's what we do, Maido. In Maido, in Maido part of, we have a team dedicated to, to intelligence, to, to say it in a way, you know, to, to, to learn and go further, you know, uh, 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 in the reservations. I always say, you never know who's coming in, from in the door. Uh, they could be, for you, it could be just table for two, but you don't know if they are celebrating their anniversary, special day, it could, be, it could be the most important days of their lives. And uh, you don't know about it. Uh, but if you do your job right, they would remember that day for, forever as a very nice. And if you don't do your, if, if, you, if you have problems in, in service, in the kitchen and everything, it could, it could be a disaster. So you have a responsibility in a way. Um, nothing makes me more happy and I, and I tell my team all the time that you have, you have to, to feed your soul and your heart from, see, from seeing the smiles of, 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 uh, of, uh, of the customers. You know? And that's one thing, one thing that one time Alain Ducas told me. Yeah, we were talking in, in Peru and he said, you know, how he really knew 
if someone was happy, you know, he, he looked at the people. People can tell you many things. You know, it was, it, it was very good, but they, are, they actually did have a good experience. Sometimes they don't tell you. But when, they, when you see their faces while they, while they are sitting, you know, the way they talk, they, when they have the first bite of, 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 of one of the tasting menu, of the tasting menu, and you see their faces, you, you know if they like it or not. So, so you're, you're, you're like looking, you know, to see, and I say, no, there, there's, there's a problem there. We have to check it out. So, I mean, to make the, the, the answer short, I, 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 the, the thing I like to do the most is to cook, but more than cooking, I like to, I like to, 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 to give uh, happiness to, to, to people and to my customers. So I really try to relate uh, with them uh, a lot, and uh, and uh, if if some if somebody comes once to the restaurant, we already have it, you know, in a, in a database. So so we would we would try to get as much information from him. So if he comes next time, you know, uh, it could come up in the system, and uh, we would try to surprise him to, to to let them know that we knew know that they have already been there, and uh, and that we know their their their, uh, their preferences in a way. So, so I think for, for somebody it's, uh, that, that goes once or twice to a restaurant, when you go back, they remember you and they know what you like. It's like, it makes you feel good, you know? So, so yeah, I mean, I do that and many, many restaurants do that in, right now in the industry because it's a way, uh, it, 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 it's a way of, uh, of, uh, of having, a, a, in Peru we call it it's fidelization, you know, of the customers in a way, so that's, how, that's the way I relate with them. So most of them are friends right now, really. I, I mean, we have a lot of customers where I, uh, that would, are not customers anymore, only are friends. I would say from the Peruvian, uh, because we have a lot, 80% of our customers come from, from around the world, but 20% are locals. And this 20%, uh, I would say from this 20%, 15% are my friends. So. They, they would WhatsApp me you know, all the time. They have my WhatsApp and they can drive me crazy with the reservations uh, anyways. But, uh, but we go out to eat sometimes. They invite me to their houses to cook. They would cook for me sometimes also. Uh, I say, I want to cook for you, okay? So, so, so this relationship, is, it, it, it's fun, you know, and, and, and I love it. You have to love what you do. Yeah. Right? I always say, when, when, when I have an opportunity to go to a cooking school, uh, I, I always tell them, you know, you have to have this passion. It, it, if, if you want to do this because of what you see on TV or, you, of, of, or what you see on magazine and stuff, there, there, there's no reason to be a chef. If, uh, it, 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 you, you have to enjoy it, really enjoy it, because it's hard work, you know, anyways. And uh, if you don't like it, if you don't really like it, you're not going to be able to make it because uh, you're going you're gonna to quit, you know, in halfway anyway. So, um, but yes, there's nothing better, you know. Your business can be the best business in the world, but but there's nothing more that, that makes you more happy uh, that, that, than seeing a smile or, or, or getting called from, from from the kitchen from a table and and to tell you that you know I've seen people, for example, uh, and and I and I have I have it on TripAdvisor. It came out. It, 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 this uh, review came two days ago. You no, know, of a customer that came and because of the whole experience, she went out crying. For example in tears but it was not because of something bad it was because of of of, of the the emotions that she had in the restaurant so so when you read that you know it's uh you wake up and you read this because usually these reviews come in the morning you know and you say okay i'm happy today and um and that's i think uh part of uh the business uh, part of the job you know part of part of uh, what makes you want to to do more and more and more to, 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 satisfy, to satisfy your customers.